Hi, I'm Jean Enriqueno here with uh, Jake Morrison, who was the VFX supervisor on Ant-Man. So, what did you do in the film exactly? You did pretty much everything. You did, uh... Well, we were on for a long time. It's been a nearly two year run of picture. And, uh, you know, as the overall production visual effects supervisor, you get to be there from the very beginning. So you're there from the script. You get to see the storyboards come to life. We get to work through the previs. You do pre-production uh, all the way to the shoot, and then of course we do the post-production. So you do get a great overview on the whole place. It's a, it's a really interesting, uh, interesting job, and this one's just been especially challenging. Were there any red flags when you started the production? Something that just scared the shit out of you when you began that? Well, I think the, the key is everybody's seen shrinking films before, and the the issue is uh, although each of the shrinking films that that's come before is the best that the technology could possibly do at that time. Audiences are really sophisticated now. Like in 2015, you know, everybody has seen such high, consistently high levels of work. So they know if, if you show them something that isn't completely photo real, in a heartbeat they'll know that it's a fake. So the first thing we needed to do is make sure all the, the small, the macro environments he goes to, you need to absolutely believe that they're completely real. So photo real needs photos. So we said we had to start with photos. So we had to build real sets and shoot all those. And then at no point in the game can you ever think that Ant-Man or Yellow Jacket, the characters in there, are not people in suits. So even if they're absolutely tiny, half an inch tall, and they're running around and fighting each other and, and throwing lines at each other, you still have to believe that that's Paul Rudd in the suit. So those those two things, actually, if, if either one of them had failed, uh, it, it could have been fairly uh, fairly bad. <laughs> pretty epic, I imagine, but you you pulled it off pretty well. So the, Thank you. The congratulations. Thousands of artists around the world contributed to this film, for sure. I'm sure of it. Uh, tell me, uh, how is this film different from other uh, Marvel movies? Because this, this is not your first one. No, I mean, the last one, myself and Diana Giorgiti, who is our visual effects producer, literally finished uh, Thor, The Dark World, on a Friday and started on Ant-Man on the Monday. Wow. Uh, it's very different. I mean, there's no Asgard. Asgard in, in Thor um, would be, say, um, the bathtub in, in this movie. I mean, it's completely apples and oranges, very, very different. The powers that Thor's got are completely different as well. Obviously, he has his big hammer and he's able to summon lightning and he's a god. Um, this is uh, 180 degrees. Um, Paul Rudd plays Scott Lang, who is literally a guy. He finds the suit, uh, he's led to it, but he finds the suit. Uh, and so it, it's, it's completely different in many ways in the sense that Tony Stark made his own suit. Um, you know, Thor was born to it. Captain America, you know, um, found his powers along the way. But any of us could technically be Ant-Man. You could, any of us could get in the suit and do this stuff. And, and the powers that you get are from the suit entirely. So it's very different. He, but he can't fly. Um, he can punch really hard. Um, but the weird thing is he actually can't even run very fast because if you're half an inch tall and you're running even at Usain Bolt speeds, um, you really only cover about three inches a second. <laughs> so he has to jump an awful lot. Was that difficult? How did you, I guess that was mostly CG. How did that, was that made? Well, what we did is we made sure that for, for any, any of the landings, if somebody's jumping or landing, the key is to make sure that they, they look like a real person. So we had Paul, he's actually really very physical on this one. We had him do a lot of motion capture. So we really had Paul Rudd in there doing this stuff. And we had Colin, who was his stunt uh, player for the, for the film. So we, we did motion capture for all that. So we had real, real people, real physics, like as they hit the ground and roll, or as they jump, it's really an actual person in the suit and you believe that but then of course animation takes over when they get in the air and suddenly you know he's jumping the equivalent of two football fields for us but then when he lands again we go back into real genuine people physics is there any shot in there that you really are proud of specific oh yeah many i mean i think all the vendors did extraordinary work i mean the train battle there's some just great moments in there with thomas the tank engine i think we all, we all love that um you know, all the way to the, the other end of the, the scale, there's, um, we open the film in an incredibly, incredibly complicated sequence um, where we have four actors in one scene and only one of them is in the right time space. We had to de-age two of them and we had to re-age one of them. So that's the opening scene of the film. And if you don't get that, it's Michael Douglas we're talking about. So if you didn't get that completely right, you, uh, and Peyton, uh, our director, expressed that to me a number of times, if that wasn't completely convincing to the audience, you've, you've lost them in the first scene. So, I mean, the, the weight on the shoulders of VFX departments actually <laughs> was actually fairly, fairly immense on this one. So from, from the bookends of the movie, we're proud throughout. There's not, uh, we think the vendors did incredible work and, uh, and there's not, not a bad shot in there. Let me ask you, when you deliver a, pro a project like this, how do you feel? Like uh, nervous, uh, sleepless nights, uh, you wonder how people are gonna react. What, what's the feeling when, once the film is delivered? 
Oh, it's immense relief. I mean, it's, uh, as, my, as my mother is fond of saying, because um, we spent two years on it, it takes longer to make one of these films than it does to make an elephant. The gestation period of an elephant is 18 months, I believe. And so to actually, it takes that long to make an elephant, but it takes even longer to make one of these films. It, it's crazy. So you, so much of your mind and, and concentration and you're, you're thinking about a lot of the how, you start off with the how, you get these blue sky, blue sky scripts where incredible set pieces are in there and you could almost go any direction um, technically and it's up to us to really drill down and work out what we think is the best solution for the, for the, the problems that the filmmaker is going to give us, you know, the opportunities. Um, so it's, in some respects it's, it's a bet, you, you bet your best instincts on what you, can, what you think will be the right way to deliver the work for the studio and for the director. And so in some cases it's, it's a year before you find out if that bet's paid off correctly. Um, it's obviously something that we, you base that upon experience on previous projects, but there's a, certainly a relief. When the first shots came out um, in Cassie's bedroom, and we saw the train and we saw the room around it and it was 100% CG, but it looked... Uh, was it 100% CG? Yeah, 100% CG. The room was real, so we shot all of that room. Okay, so you have both a real and a digital one. Well, it, that, when we did that with all the sets, we always started with the real set. That That's was, massive. That, well, that was the thing. We had a thing called the macro unit that we started, which worked in parallel with main production, that literally created somewhere in the region of 50 individual sets and ran for 40 days. And they literally went through and harvested. We, we Are those like scanned or re recreated manually, a bit of both? A bit of both. Really uh, an exhaustive process, I would have to say. We'd shoot, we'd, we'd get the sets, we'd light them, uh, we had a dedicated macro unit uh, director of photography. We would um, bring in motion picture photography. We would always shoot in motion picture photography so you had like a perfect true reference of what it should look like. Then we would go in with a stills pipeline where we would literally shoot hundreds and thousands of stills. Um, and then we'd go in with a 3D scanner, scan the entire thing. So then you've got all the building blocks that you need to be able to take this. And because the, the appetite from the filmmakers is to be able to put the camera anywhere do anything but it has okay. to be real let me let a very quick final question uh, after this project did you have a vacation or do you have a, a break I do have a vacation going to England to see the family and can't uh, absolutely can't wait it's gonna be great awesome thank you very much uh, this is Jean Lecano for CGS TV